they were inhumane, and the Parliament says sorry to you for those laws. I commend this bill to the House. Lewis Award. Tēnā koe te māngai o te whare. Um, it's my pleasure as a member of the Justice and Electoral Select Committee to speak on this, the Criminal Records Expungement of Convictions for Historical Homosexual Offences Bill, and this its first reading. Uh, I particularly want to start with an acknowledgement of a colleague who's no longer here, and that is Kevin Haig, who a year ago today presented the petition of Wirimu Dimchik and 2,111 others that, as uh, my colleague Marnima Davidson read out earlier, asked, for, uh, 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 asked this House to promptly issue an official apology to those convicted, and secondly, uh, to pass legislation which sets out a process for reversing their convictions of those convicted, both living or deceased, in a manner which upholds the manner and dignity of those convicted. Wow, so that started, uh, that process started for Wirimu uh, and all those involved in collecting those signatures in December uh, 2014. And I think we should put it into a global context, actually, uh, because in 2013, by royal pardon, Alan Turing uh, was given a pardon for uh, gross indecency. And that gross indecency uh, was part of the legislation uh, that we inherited uh, in our country. And it started a process uh, in the UK that actually on the 31st of January this year saw more than 15,000 uh, UK men who were convicted of gross in indecency having those offences uh, expunged. And what that led to around the world were jurisdictions uh, and our community in Australia, in Canada, in Germany, all over the world actually seeking uh, the same recourse that had been given to Alan Turing, uh, given to him because of his contribution to the World War II uh, events, uh, and because of his, I guess, service to the country, he was given a pardon. Um, when I look at the convictions in New Zealand, uh, actually under the Offences Against the Person Act of 1867, if you were convicted, you could spend your whole life in prison uh, for uh, committing gross indecency. Uh, that was then altered in 1893, where if you were convicted of sodomy, it was punishable by life imprisonment with hard labour. Uh, but the interesting thing is that indecency between males also uh, provided an opportunity for us to be flogged and whipped. And I say that because in Arche this year, we've had men who were flogged and whipped because they were caught having sex. And so, you know, we've moved a long way to where we are today. We're in 1986. Uh, under the Homosexual Law Reform Act. We dis discriminalised male same-sex consensual intercourse, but what we also did uh, was equalise the age, and we made us equal uh, to other New Zealanders. Um, in highlighting uh, Kevin's involvement in the petition with Wirimu, I also want to um, talk about some of the things that he talked about at the time. And he said that, um, so he was the only MP who could have been convicted, who was in the House, and I acknowledge my colleague Grant Robertson, who's, um, who's too young, but he's sitting beside me now. But he said that the impact of, of those um, who were caught was massive. They lost their jobs, they lost their houses, they lost their families, a lot of them were isolated. And you can imagine uh, how that disposition then contributed to how most of them live the rest of their lives, in poverty, as drug, alcohol-addicted people, uh, depressed people, and some of them did uh, commit suicide. But the one thing that struck me with what Kevin shared was um, when they were convicted, uh, the private lives were read out in a summary of facts in courts and on, on, and on sentencing, their names were published in the local newspaper for all to see. So they were outed. So 
So it wasn't a private thing that happened. It actually was an incredibly public thing to happen. And for a lot of them, they did. They lost their entire family community network, which is why a lot of our whānau fled to Australia to start a new life. I also wanted to highlight uh, where I think this bill emanated from, because Minister Adams, when the petition was presented uh, to the House, initially stated that it could require a case-by-case -case investigation and that it could be too difficult. But what she also said was that she would wait for our Justice and Electoral Sec Sele uh, Select Committee to consider the petition before she made any decision. And what I would like to acknowledge, uh, my colleagues on the Justice and Electoral Select Committee who are members of the government. So I want to acknowledge Sarah Dowie, our chair. I want to acknowledge Chris Bishop. I want to acknowledge Paul Foster Bell. I want to acknowledge John O'Naylor. And I want to acknowledge Maureen Pugh and also Madama Fox. Because you obviously kept the minister abreast with what was happening before the Select Committee in terms of the petition. And I actually think that's what drove her and the government to bring in this piece of legislation to the House. And it also says something to me about the process of this House and the value of petitions and the process that happens in select committees to, you know, to lead to an output such as a piece of legislation which is in effect going to uh, implement everything that the petition asked for. And that is a, an incredibly valuable thing, and I think we should all cherish the moment, because it says our democracy works. You know, we've all contributed to this bill being here today, on the backs of our ancestors, all those who have come before us. And so I'm going to take an opportunity, because we're going to also uh, very soon be uh, talking about another very important piece of legislation. And what I want to highlight in the Oranga Tamariki legislation that we're about to debate, and it's wonderful that the Minister is in the House at the moment, is that uh, under the Oranga Tamariki legislation, we have recognised the child's right, child and young person's right to their sexual orientation and gender identity. And I think that's an incredibly profound thing. And I just want to read a, a quote from Lord McNally talking about Alan Turing's royal pardon, and I quote, the law at the time required a prosecution, and as such, long-standing policy has been to accept that such convictions took place, and rather than trying to alter the historical context and to put right what cannot be put right, ensure, ensure instead that we never again return to those times. And so the reason I highlight that, Minister, is because children in care now have the right to their sexual orientation and gender identity. But what that then means for us and for the public service and the public sector is that those children who uh, may be intersex and may be trans, they deserve access to health services that are going to ensure that their identity is, uh, is supported that they shouldn't have to face and return to times where they're discriminated against, where they're persecuted, where actually they're invisible. And that's why, as a member of our cross-party rainbow group, we've been fighting for visibility in the education sector, which is why we've said to Eero, why aren't you specifically looking at the wellbeing of our LGBTIQ when you go to our high schools? That's why we've highlighted in the health sector, and I've got a meeting uh, with Minister Coleman coming up, that our intersex children, their health needs aren't being met. That our trans children, their health needs aren't being met. And so for me, that's what this provides. It provides now another platform where we continue to springboard forward. Uh, so this is never the end. I mean, for me, it's always like kafafai tonu mato, you know, struggle without end. Because there are always discriminations uh, in our law and in our system that needs to be addressed and rectified. So today is an incredibly special day. Uh, I also want to commend the government for the apology. Uh, Annette King uh, highlighted that we've done this previously with the Chinese community and with the Samoan community. 
And so it's appropriate today that we also acknowledge that our LGBTIQ, our homosexual community in Aotearoa New Zealand deserve an apology from the state because we, we're not criminals. We never were and we never should have been. Kia ora. The question is that the criminal records expungement of convictions for historical homosexual offences bill be now read a first time. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Criminal records expungement of convictions for historical homosexual offences bill first reading. The question now is that the bill be considered by the Justice and Electoral Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that this House apologise to those homosexual New Zealanders who were convicted for consensual adult activity and recognise the tremendous hurt and suffering those men and their families have gone through and the continued effects convictions have had on them. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary opinion will say no. The ayes have it. I uh, call on government orders of the day numbers three and four. Children, young persons and their families, Oranga Tamariki Legislation Bill, third reading. Vulnerable 